congratulations, Rasna, first of all, for making it to the final list of uh, ETHR World Emerging Leaders. Thank and uh, yeah, I mean, definitely very, very well deserved. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. I'm, I'm so glad that I got a platform like ETHR World and uh, um, it has such a great value in the market as well. Like when I told people about that, you know, like I have won something like this and uh, they were... I mean, ET is a name which is known everywhere, right? So it was it was such a great addition to my skill set, to my knowledge, and uh, and I'm super thankful to ETHR World to create a platform like this, right? So nice to know. So nice to know. So so very intrigued uh, now, in fact, Rasna, to know about your journey. So we would love to hear about you know your key milestones and the experiences that have shaped your path and really brought you here? Um, so Aditya, um, not, I think a lot of us, when we start our journey, it, um, it's never a, it's never a cakewalk, right? Um, and especially when I come from uh, um, a, an education background, which was slightly not on a, a higher end when I started, I've, I've done my MBA from Guwahati University, etc., which is, of course, not renowned where we always talk about the B schools, etc. It was a hard journey to start with, um, to find that, uh, you know, myself in those top leading uh, teams, team members, all of that. Uh, but then I think uh, what, um, what made me going on and kept working on my uh, progression was uh, my my never um, never give up style of working because uh, I think uh, I never got uh, demotivated by getting uh, rejected at multiple stages um, for from many organizations. Um, but then I think what was important is I had to keep trying uh, one after the other. And uh, I think it is it is time to break that barrier when we talk about it's only B school to come up with that mindset. Uh, while I am pursuing something from a B school, but then, but then I don't think that's the only criteria we should have. And and uh, it wasn't easy for me. I come from northeast. I've brought up in northeast, and again, that's a very corner side of the country. People don't even look at that, right? So um, it wasn't easy. But then I think um, with with teams with learnings every stage it helped me to improve myself and yeah this is what makes me help come out of it okay no I totally agree with you I think that's a very very interesting journey and and you know what really helped you come out of such situations is your constancy of purpose and that is very very evident in what you just said uh, you know uh, that you really knew what you wanted to achieve you uh, you it really dreamt big and you were all in to achieve that. I think I call it in with simple statement that it's an arrogance of clarity. Right? Wow. When you, you, people call you at times that, you know, you're very arrogant because you know, you're very clear what you're aiming yeah. at. You know, yeah. even at a single project, when you work, you know what you want out of this project. When the project ends, what's the outcome that you're expected? And then you're very clear to reach to that path, right? So that arrogance of clarity is the, is the key word for me. Wow, this is very, very interesting. I mean, I haven't heard of this, something like this, but yes, I can totally relate to it, how important it must have been in shaping your path and bringing you here and uh, helping you achieve what you've achieved so far. So that brings me to the next question, in fact. So what are your core values? What are those fundamental principles, you know, that guide your actions and decision-making? Um, I think um, I, this might not be very technical answer, it's a very philosophical answer. And uh, whenever I hear many uh, leaders speaking in big forums, known personalities and celebrities, it's very, it's a very gaga thing that people talk about it. But it is expected from someone who's a common person to talk very functional, very technical. But I feel be, believe that your, your philosophies, your mantras, your ethics are root, deep rooted, right? And I think what is, um, what is important for me is when I go back home, I know tonight I can sleep well because I've done justice to my today's job. And when I'm I'm answerable for myself to myself, um, I think that is it. Because uh, uh, now again, a lot of people might take this very differently, but then when you do that, the self-realization is the word. When you do that, you know where are you? What have you done in last eight hours and twelve hours? 
and uh, how will this impact in the larger picture? So I think, um, again, just to quickly give you an example of, you know, uh, there was an exercise which I did in one of the organizations where I was supposed to um, uh, resize the team, right? Um, I can't live with the baggage of what I've done and with the roles that we have, um, it's, it's sometimes, of course, end of the day, we are also employees and we are also human beings. It comes back and haunts us, right? Um, but then um, I think I can boldly say this, that not even a single employee um, was not given an opportunity before any any final decision, right? So I think that was the justice that I did. And, I, and this was for myself, not for them. So this was for myself. So the day you are uh, done, clear, again, you have that sense that, you know, okay, you've done today's job well, job well done in the day, then I think that's that's what keeps you moving for the next day. Motivates you to wake up tomorrow again, go back, have new challenges, solve them again, and then come back with that same zeal, you know? So I think that's something very important. Yeah, I understand and relate to, you know, the core value that you just mentioned. It's very important to be very proud of, you know, what you are doing and that really motivates you and keep you going, you know, in that direction to continue. And you're not doing it for anybody else, but for yourself, you know, and I think that is very, very important. How you're doing justice to your own expectations that you have for yourself. So excellent. Thank you so much for sharing that. And now, uh, you know, uh, connecting this with your success mantra. So, you know, maybe if you can share the strategies or beliefs that have really contributed to your achievement. So what's your success mantra? So um, I think um, uh, I don't see a point. Uh, see, in corporate, it's, it is a race where everybody is into something, right? And we all have big dreams. We all come up with big goals. We want to achieve them with the organization. We want to grow with the organization. Uh, but I think a lot, many times we tend to forget, uh, especially, and I feel uh, once long time back, somebody asked me, what do you think is not right about your role in human resource? And I yeah. said, because um, human is missing in resources these days. So I, I feel that we tend to miss out on that aspect um and we teach we give sessions we give coaching to our business stakeholders about empathy about all of that um i think that is something um uh, whenever you deal with the situation while there are business goals in place yes you need to um you need to track and measure everything um at the same time um being there's no substitute to empathy and respect um and this is something that you earn, right? You earn, yes. even if somebody is not a, is not a performer, um, it's not crime. It's not criminal to not yes. to perform. Uh, that person still deserves that equal respect, uh, equal empathy, and to yes. be dealt very professionally. So I think professionalism with a blend of empathy and respect is something um, I feel is the mantra that I belong to because I put myself in their shoes first before I go yeah. ahead yeah. for something, right? Uh, because again, I'm also an employee. Tomorrow this yeah. can happen to me as well. How would yeah. I like to be dealt in this situation? Yeah. So I think uh, respect and even my LinkedIn profile says that there's no substitute to respect and empathy. So wow. I strongly believe in that. This is very interesting. I mean, respect and empathy, uh, you know, being the strong pillars, you know, that have really helped you. And as success mantra, I think this is for all the leaders to really follow that, you know, even the underperformers, you know, they need that empathy. In fact, they need more empathy more and respect. Empathy. Absolutely. They have the courage. So, so really trusting them. So, so this is a very fantastic, uh, you know, uh, success mantra that you've shared. I'm sure this will really help. So now, what is the advice that you have for uh, young HR leaders? Um, I think upskilling is the key. Like if you don't keep yourself up to mark, um, as per the market requirements, why do you why do you think we go through a lot of general knowledge questions, right? We love reading newspaper, what's going in the world. We want to be updated in that, right? Likewise, when it comes to your skills and your roles, it's very important to upskill yourself. And I think ETHR World, this particular award was one of my that step because I knew that I'm going to learn, I'm going to meet people, I'm going to have a lot of opportunity to speak to people. Like this is one of these, those, right? Yeah. So um, this helps you grow. This helps you meet people. 
um, cross functionally, cross culturally, you know, you learn a lot of things. So I think upskilling is the key. And that, that again comes without what have you done in the past? Where do you come from? Yes. If you are upgrading yourself, in life when it comes to your life standards and your academic your qualification your mindset you're growing so yeah. i think upskilling is the only word i can say yeah and that certainly is very important i mean getting into that learning loop you know where you have to unlearn quite a lot and especially yes. when you're rising in your professional career so unlearn relearn learn is extremely important and extremely upskilling important. no doubt yeah no absolutely I think this because comes up with, uh, you know, you you need to um, keep yourself updated for everything. So I think learning comes at every stage of life. Yeah. You're learning at every, like today as a manager, first time manager, you're learning as a manager. Yeah. When you're coaching first time, you're learning as a coach, right? Yeah. So so I think learning is, is never ending and it should never end. So yeah. that's, that's the growth I look up to and I think that's how people should also perceive. Absolutely, Rasna. So agree with you. So what does winning this title of an ETHR World Emerging Leader, what does it mean to you? And what difference do you think it's going to make in your career? Winning means I felt I'm on cloud nine because <laughs> this was amazing. And this is the first time I was um, I was contesting for something at this uh, level where, you know, it was I was, and especially it became bigger when I understood the amount of people who had nominated yeah. themselves, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, the number of folks who were there and, yeah. and the levels that I was competing with. So I think that was, I was taking a step back to realize, okay, what have I won? So I think that was amazing. And I'm so glad that I was a part of the shortlisted teams, uh, team members. Um, how is this going to add to my, uh, to my journey future because um, as I said, uh, I think this gave me an opportunity to take a step back and realize what have I achieved. So as women leader, what happened? So I've done this. Um, I'm remarkable from the from the Google, right? Okay. Um, and that talks about women leader who are mm. underrepresented, you know, groups yeah. who do not, uh, who shy away, right? To talk mm. about their, their wins. Yeah. And yeah. women particularly fall under that. Yeah. I'm yeah. not being generic here, but a lot of them, right? Yeah. From the data perspective. And um, this helped me realize, okay, I have achieved so much. So especially yeah. for ladies who are doing so much in their lives, um, we don't realize. We are slightly hesitant to come out and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I think this gives you a platform and the way it's published, it's it's there on all the channels, et cetera. Mm -hmm. This gives you that hidden face, some opportunity and platform to talk about it, right? Um, sure. So I was one of those. I think, uh, um, again, that program was very helpful and EDHR World has is a cherry on the cake for me on that because uh, this gave me a lot of confidence to come out and talk about it on my achievements. I can boldly talk about, okay, this is why I won this award, right? Um, so I think uh, that confidence where, you know, you have that somewhere hidden in you and you have achieved a lot, but you don't realize it, that comes with this, a platform like this, where you know you've done it and it's recognized. So glad to hear this, uh, that, you know, in fact, it's such a pleasure and a privilege for us to be a part of your journey. And, uh, you know, I mean, very, very well deserved, Ratna. Once again, heartiest congratulations. And you keep rising, keep shining and keep inspiring all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Aditya. And thank you to the entire ETHR team. Um, I think uh, Ajita, I have been in constant touch with her, uh, bothering her all the time. But then thank you so much for your support. Never a minute I felt that the team wasn't supportive or not available. It was a very smooth journey. And I'm so glad that I'm associated with ETH World. Means so much to us. Wishing you all the very best. Thank you so thank much, Rasna, for joining I us. Know.